Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Tonight in the Holy Eucharist, Jesus gets as close to you as humanly possible. As I said in our adult Bible study this past Sunday morning, this is where Jesus touches you. It's Eden. Here and now, until someday, His return or your death will move you to Eden there and then. Let us pray. These are your words, Holy Father. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Tonight the Holy Week gives way to the Triduum, the three most sacred days of the church year. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil, what we also call the Night of Watching. Tonight we all know what's coming. We've got Judas in the betrayal. You've got Peter in the denial. You've got Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then there are the trials along with the torture, followed by the crucifixion, and then the death of our Lord. And with all of that looming, Monday, Thursday can feel a little bit grim. But just for this night, before the resurrection of Easter morning, everything turns white. For you see, what started with ashes, these 40 days of reflection and repentance, as I say, are now white with joy. And you have been drawn here. You've been drawn to this most holy of spots. You've been drawn to your church. You've been drawn to this altar, which is nothing short of a miracle. For you see, tonight heaven comes to earth in the gracious, forgiving presence of Jesus Christ our Lord to do for you what he did for Nicodemus, to do for you what he did for the woman at the well, to do for you what he did for the blind man at the pool of Siloam, to do for you what he did for dead Lazarus, where he tells you once again, you are mine and I am yours. Imagine if he were closing the gap between you and him. Our Lord gives to us on this Monday, Thursday, what he promised in Jeremiah and delivered up to us in the Gospel of St. Luke, and that is a new covenant made in his very own blood. Tonight, this high priest... He draws us near, and it's like He draws the curtain back that we might see the mystery. The mystery of the host actually becoming the meal and feeding us, and in so doing, forgiving us. This is the night to be reconciled to our God and reconciled as well to each other. Think of it as a fresh start for each and every one of us. This is the night where Jesus refuses to be separated from any of you and He refuses to let us be separated from each other. No matter what you've done to Him, Jesus insists on loving you and He insists we love each other. This is the night that makes us church and teaches us to live in hope and love and goodness from now until He comes again, and it happens nowhere else. And this is why the early church rejoiced in the Eucharist, calling it the medicine of immortality. You've heard me refer to that before. They also called it the antidote to death. You see, on that first Monday, Thursday at the Eucharist, the disciples were thankful, they were grateful, and they were joyful. But from the start, Jesus taught them that this was not a grace and a joy and a gratitude just for them alone. They were not meant to keep it among themselves. 
They saw it first in Jesus himself and his tangible love and his humble service. Jesus called his 12 disciples to share one last meal. And there he takes a towel, a basin of water, and he washes them. It's his way of helping them understand him and understand themselves. It's his way of showing them who he is and who they are. It's his own way of making them his church. A way, as it were, of bestowing hope and showing love and prompting them. As you recall from that scene, Peter, he protests, you will never wash my feet. Jesus stands firm. If you do not allow me to do what I have been sent to do, then you have no part in me. Please, by all means, Peter says. And Jesus says, thank you. And then he tells them, I am the Lord, I am the teacher, I am the servant, I am the example, and I send you out to do these things as well. No doubt it was difficult for the disciples to have their master be their slave. And it was even more difficult for them to carry out what he called them to do, and which is true of us as well. In any time and in any, any place, we finish every divine service here asking the Lord, help us now to move from this place out there into the world. This is a move from Eucharist to Eucharistia. Rejoicing in the gift that He gives, the body and blood that then propels you from this altar out into His world for the good of His church. Again, this move is not always easy. This is why the very first thing we say when we come back into this place is what? I, a poor, miserable sinner. Yet it is why, says the writer to the Hebrews, that we ought not to neglect the meeting together. For you see, meeting together for them always meant meeting around the Eucharist. To gather, as it were, like little birds around the mama bird. To receive what she has to give. That's why, says the writer of the Hebrews, that we ought to stir each other up in hope and love and good works, which we so often find so terribly difficult to do. You know, just one day later, the body and blood of that supper, he will be hung on the cross for the forgiveness of the world. Two days later, that same body and blood will rests in the tomb and then three days later that body and blood will rise from the dead for the recreation of the entire world. In just a moment the curtain will be pulled back once again and you will glimpse the mystery where we are mystically bound to Jesus and mysteriously united with those around us. It does not matter politically where we stand. It does not matter our socioeconomic status. It does not matter male or female. It does not matter young or old. We gather in this place and we have koinonia, fellowship. A fellowship where we just chew the rag and talk about the weather. No. We have deep abiding fellowship because we believe what Jesus says about this meal. This is miracle. This is the medicine of immortality. This is the antidote to death. This is the anti-venom in the most literal sense of the word. Everybody knew it would come, said Jeremiah. And here it is, says Jesus. 
Everybody believes, says St. Paul, that the cup of blessing which we bless is the blood of Christ and the bread that we break is his body. Everybody knows this, says the writer of Hebrews, that only this body and only this blood draws us to this holy place and lets us live. That only this priest can wash us clean and only this host can feed us forgiving us of our sins. So tonight, when you approach this holy rail, know that nothing is held back from you. Not your sins, not your doubts, all of it here, drawn to this holy spot at this altar, all of it forgiven, without conditions, without cost. You know, it is a joy to be here with you tonight with all of the white vestments and pyramids and to have this gift given yet again. And then to watch tomorrow, learning as well why it is called Good Friday. And then the next day as we wait with Jesus in the silence and in the darkness and in anticipation. And then the next day, as he resurrects to life, and we live together in hope and in love and in good. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand together.